Great to have you with us here at Home Team Grill in the fan corner of Maine and Vine for the Shaka Smart Radio Show. Coaches out recruiting. So how about a big round of applause for a guy all, you all know, assistant coach Mike Rhodes. Great to have Coach Rhodes here. How are you, Coach? Hold on a second. There we go. Good to go. How are you, Coach? Great, great. Everything is going great at VCU. We're excited for this weekend. And Coach Ballard and Coach Smart are on the road, so here I am. It's good to have you here, man. It's been a while. Let's kind of go back first to the Fordham game first. Another packed house. It's a homecoming day crowd, and, and certainly the Rams had another great effort. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, it's, it's a packed house all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's just what we do at VCU, and it's exciting for our players, our coaches, uh, for everyone that comes in for the first time to see our program and our, and our school. Uh, the excitement and the atmosphere, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, the comments we get are, when we're all over the country and people see us on TV about our environment and our, our arena is, is incredible, and we're, we're, we're excited about it. Uh, it was a great win, great team win. A lot of guys really stepped up. Guys came off the bench and really produced, and we had some guys shoot the ball better and so forth, and, and it was a great team victory. Yeah, a couple, couple guys who had big games are with us here tonight. We're going to bring in, in a little bit, uh, Troy Daniels and Javante Reddick. Troy, of course, a huge, huge night. 29 points, filling it up from outside. He likes, he likes those long balls, doesn't he? I think when he <laughs> moves further back, he shoots better. And, and Javante. The further back he, he is. Felt, yeah, I think yeah. He, he, there's something. He's probably what, nearsighted or farsighted, whatever it is. <laughs> he, he's better back. I don't think he wears – he needs maybe glasses to make the short ones. But he uh, even in practice, even today in practice, he was filling it up. And uh, you want seniors – at the second half of the season to take off, and, and that was a great great start uh, to the second half for him. As a guy who was a shooter in college and a darn good one, can you talk about you know the process of shooting and how Troy has worked hard? Because you're out early working with guys. Troy's always the first guy out there. Oh, well, I, you know, I, I think the number one thing is confidence, and he believes every time he shoots it, no matter where he's at on the court, it's going in. And that's the number one thing is every time you shoot it, no matter what the result was the last time, is you think it's going in and he has great confidence in himself and then he knows everybody around him has great confidence and the other thing you work at it and uh, there's nobody since we've been here four years in the last four years nobody's taken more shots in the gym without people around than Troy and I think you see the results in games and he's an incredible shooter but not only that he's turned himself into a better player each year and that's a compliment to his work ethic and his approach to to our team. No question about it. Uh, the other guy who's going to be joining us, Javante Reddick, he's the reigning Atlantic 10 player of the week. Four straight double doubles. He has been dialed in. And uh, talk a little bit about Javante and the way he's performed these last few games. He just ke keeps getting better. Keeps getting better. He, he is he's, he's becoming more confident as a basketball player. And and people don't realize Javante hasn't played for a long time. I mean, he didn't start playing basketball at eight years old and played biddy basketball in AU. Uh, you know, he really got playing serious basketball in high school. So he's still learning as we go along, but it just seems his, his growth is get, it's, it's getting faster and faster. And I'm just really proud of him. His approach to his game and, and getting better all the time is, is phenomenal. And, you know, when guys have success, you become more confident. And with he's such a great athlete, he's, you know, he does a great job for his size of getting up and down the floor. And he's just, he keeps improving. He's, these two guys are a lot of fun to coach. Uh, they're very coachable. They listen. Uh, Javante finally understands that if he, uh, that he could be one of the best players around. And he's working towards doing that. And, and we see it at times, without a doubt. Well, we know it because he's seeing a ton of double teams. And he's had to get better because teams recognize him as a threat, especially in the paint. And talk about how he's worked because he's constantly getting double teamed and, and working to make that move before the double team comes well, that's, in. You that's know? the greatest respect in the game you can get when the other coach's game plan is we, we don't have anyone that can guard you one-on-one. -on -one. We have to do something different. We have to trick you to stop you. And that's a great compliment. To beat that compliment is you learn to play sometimes without the ball and you move a little bit better without the ball. Uh, you count on your teammates. And, and one thing for, for Javante, if, if Troy's man leaves him the double Jew, Jew can throw it to Troy, they're not going to do that again. Right. And it's, it's the same thing with some of our players. And, 
and they they play off each other. But Javante's done a great job of, of using his teammates with double teams and, and and looking for the other big guy and some shooters on the outside. He's just getting better and better. I'm really proud of him. Yeah, here with uh, assistant coach Mike Rose. I want to get your impression on some of the new guys to the program, guys that uh, are stepping up in their first year. We'll start with Melvin Johnson who, you know, we know has a, a big personality. He's a big jokester, I guess, on the team, but he has no fear on the court. None at all. None at all. Um, you know, I always ask him, do you know, like, do you know that you're at, in college at VCU, or does he still think he's back in the Bronx? Uh, he just loves to play, but he's a competitive, very confident player, and you, you want guys like that. I, I don't think we can have 13 Melvins on our team, uh, but, boy, having a couple guys like him, it, it's just great for our team, great for our confidence. And, he has really improved since we started, and uh, you know he missed the summer, uh, coming in late late July. But he's done a, a phenomenal job of buying in, and he's been playing more and more because he, he's doing what Coach Coach Smart wants him to do. And I'm really proud of him. He's a really good shooter. His stats don't show that, uh, but one thing everyone knows, he can really score the basketball. He's yeah. wired to score. He. He is not, definitely not taking a shot he hasn't liked, I'll tell you that. You've been around the game so long. Is it fun when you see young players like Melvin slowly start to figure things out, like it clicks? You know, maybe not all at once, but they start. I mean, obviously, he's going to have to play defense if he's going to VCU, but he starts to figure things out, what level he needs to be at game in, game out. Yeah, well, part of it is we have great leadership. So it's not always the coaches telling them. It's Javante, it's Troy, it's Darius saying, hey, if you want to play, if you want to play more, you have to do this specific thing. And he's doing it. And his defense has improved a lot. No one ever has, has demanded him to play defense. He's been the guy always scoring 20, 25 points. And he can guard when he wants to. He can really guard the dribble, the ball. And he's done a great job of that this year. And now he's learning to play through screens and play off the ball. And uh, he's really into it right now. You, he looks like he's having fun. And he had a hip flexor injury for most of the fall into the season. And that hurt him a lot with his growth. And we had to take him off the court at times. He didn't get as many reps. Now he's getting reps. And, and, and he's doing well in practice. And he's sustaining it to games. And uh, he's going to get better and better. And the kid wants to win. He really wants to win. Sometimes he thinks, if I do this all the time, I'm going to win. He's learning to do it through a team now, and I'm really proud of him. No question about it. And you talk about guys that need to step up with the absence of DJ Haley, Jared Guest, Justin Toyo, are probably going to see a little bit more time. And they're two guys, again, that you are starting to see more and more development game in, game out. Yeah, those guys just need reps. They need reps. They need experience. The only way I always say about big guys, especially big guys, they, the way they improve the most is getting playing time, and they're in the heat of the, heat of the battle. And uh, I think both those guys are getting that now. They're getting a taste. We've all seen Jarrett. We've, we've, we've seen faces of Jarrett where he's, he's uh, getting better and better and what he's capable of doing. We just need to make him sustain it all the time. And then Justin Toyo, he's very talented. He just has to learn to play against college-ready bodies, and he has to learn to play at a faster, more physical speed. But he will do that. Those two guys are very... Very coachable. They're, they're, they're really into it. They want to make Coach Smart proud. And when you right. have players that want to make the coach, you know, make the coaches happy about uh, about, the, about their performance, the, the growth will come. And th those guys are doing a great job. I'm excited that they're, you know, they're we're putting them in the games early and and they're producing. The season's been, uh, you know, obviously a grind. I mean, the things have gone well. No midweek game. What was it like this week, not having to prepare for a game on Wednesday or Thursday? And maybe did that help? That made me freshen up the legs a little bit. Well, uh, think about the past couple years when we were playing in the CA, we were playing a lot of three three games in five days. Right. And last year, it was right around this time where we had a bunch of them. Now, we, we went on a great run, but it still wears you out. As some of these older guys, it's great for Javante, who's playing a lot of minutes that – uh, we didn't. Uh, we did a lot of skill development on Monday. Tuesday, uh, yesterday was a sp uh, or Tuesday was a specific type of practice, not as long. So it really did a good job of uh, healing some some you know minor injuries and some some bruises and getting certain guys off their feet. And at this time of year, everybody has a cold or a cough or something <laughs> like that, and it gives them a little bit more sleep and, and rest. I, I think it's huge. That being said, I suspect they're going to be very anxious to get on the floor Saturday at Charlotte. This is a critical A-10 game, big uh, road contest. Absolutely. We had, a, we had a great practice today, and you could see that uh, they were biting they were biting at it a little bit. That They, they want to play. And this time of year, you, you don't want to play against your teammates anymore. You want to play against everybody else. So I think our guys will be excited. I think they'll be ready. Um, and, uh, you know, our, we take great pride in going on the road and trying to beat other teams. And this is this is going to be a big game. Talk a little bit about Charlotte, a uh, really talented team, especially at home. Yes. Uh, you know, they're known for a long time. 
Uh, the Charlotte team has been known for a long time of, of doing well at home, beating beating a lot of teams, doing well in their conference, and, and even bringing some bigger schools, ACC teams in there in the past, beating them. So we got our, our work cut out for us. They're very big and strong. They're a very physical team. Um, they want to slow it slow it down and, and grind the game out. Now, yesterday they scored a lot of points against Temple, uh, which is not what they usually do. Right. Uh, but we're, we're excited about it. we, we got to get the game to be our pace, no matter if we're home or away, and play our style. And uh, they still got to play against our style, no matter where they're at, home yeah. or away. Yeah, do you see teams trying to figure it out on the fly sometimes? I mean, because you know they can't replicate it in practice. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's the thing. They try to, and some coaches say, oh, we put a sixth six player out there on defense that a lot, right. to, to trap the ball and to rotate really hard but it's not the same it's not the same when people are around and watching and especially if, if you have guards that try to fight the pressure they learn really quick that's not the way to, to, to approach it no question about it